so this is how about 90% of my solo filming out of a tree saddle shots are set up. I got a stick in my boot get off me. Sorry, there was a stick in my boot. But this is how about 90% of my shots are set up whenever I'm solo filming out of my tree saddle. I'll have my tether to the tree up high and I'll get my carabiner and my crew six knot and tie that as close as I can to the tree. And then I will have my bridge. I'll lengthen out my bridge a little bit and try to just keep everything, my carabiners as high up on the tree as I can get. So now, how I set my arm up. If you are a right-handed shooter, you want your tree arm to be on the left-hand side. If you are a right or left-handed shooter, you will want your tree arm on the right-hand side. Now, I used to run my tree arm up in front of me, right here, right in, right into the tree, and then I had my my arm would set like this and set out, but my base would be here. And a big problem that I ran into is I had no range of motion. I mean, especially, I might have had some range of motion whenever I was standing like this, but whenever I got down and say, I came down into my seating position, what happened was is either my tree arm was hitting my bridge and my camera was hitting my carabiner or my tree arm and everything was just in the way and I had no ability to be able to move my camera around to get the shot on film. And it just ended up being a real struggle uh, trying to do it that way. So I ended up running it up in the front here and it worked out so much better. And now I have complete range of motion, even kneeling down and nothing is in my way. The camera arm is free. The camera's not hitting anything on the saddle. Everything is good and everything works out perfect that way. But the one problem that a lot of solo filmers have 99% of the time is actually getting the shot on film getting the deer on film in frame you got so much going on you got deer moving you got to think about getting the camera on there and then you also got to think about making the shot on the deer so when in doubt the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is when in doubt zoom out everybody wants to get them nice tight in close-up shots and when you're solo filming a lot of the times that's not possible so when in doubt zoom out so what i will do is when i go and say i have a deer coming from left to right and he's following on a trail i will get this camera arm and i will zoom out to a focus that I think is pretty good and I'll practice this while I'm sitting in the stand when you're bored and you're in the stand and you ain't got a lot of movement or whatever deer ain't coming in zoom in zoom out practice when you're doing your b-roll whatever you're doing and just pick a good good focus good reference focus uh, something that might be the size of the deer you know where it could be a tree or anything and just test your focus out see what's good and uh, what works out that way now what I'll do is say i got a buck like i said coming from left to right i'm in my standing position to shoot i'm not in seated position i will go and he's coming off he's 50 yards away he's coming through me in a lane right in front of me it looks like at 25 yards so he's reading the script he's walking right in front of me i will pick a leaf the tree anything a pine cone anything that that buck is going to be standing at when i stop him and I will zoom out to where I got a wide enough array of frames. Say I zoom out enough to where I have at least 10 feet in frame. And when that buck comes through and I draw back, I'll check down at my camera screen. I'll see his head and his front shoulder start going in frame. And I'll stop him. Bam. You got the shot on film. And another thing about zooming out, which is good, is if that buck, when that buck runs off, all you gotta do is grab your camera and get it right on him. Versus if you zoom out, zoom in and shoot that deer on a zoomed in profile, 
and then he runs off you now have to zoom out and get on that deer and if you're using a dslr camera you got to hang your bow up zoom out get on the deer so if you're zoomed out to begin with it's a lot better let's talk about say if a deer comes in from behind me so he's coming in from behind me i turn around i see him coming up this way i see him working the trail he's about 50 yards 75 off whatever he is and he looks like he's coming down on the trail he's kind of zigzagging off a little bit i'll still stay zoomed out but what i will do in a tree saddle position right now is i will completely turn around this way i'll have my bow i'll get completely turned around my camera arm is now set up for a tree stand shot and i will grab that camera arm i'll bring it around he comes out he comes on through a trail he might be zigzagging back and forth a little bit I will still pick out which tree he was going to stop at, pine cone, log, laying down, a limb, whatever. And I will get that camera in on him, go through the same process, see wherever he's going to stop at. And if he don't stop, whenever his head and front shoulder get in the camera frame, back. And to also put into that, I've had a lot of shots that are straight down in front of me right at the base of the tree and my camera arm will be out like this and all i gotta do is turn that fluid head straight down and on them straight down shots i will not zoom in at all i'll leave my camera zoomed all the way out and i will turn that camera all the way down because usually them fluid heads have a range that they stop at and i've been zoomed in and turned it down and my fluid head stop and the deer ain't in frame. And I mean, that's that's a real close in shot. And then I've shot and then the deer not being frame and then there's the shot and I didn't have it on film. So I'll stay zoomed all the way out, turn my fluid head all the way down, camera all the way down, and I'll shoot right out underneath me, grab it, get chase the deer, get it on film, everybody's happy. It was a great hunt. Now let's get into secondary angle cameras now on my secondary angle cameras what I've done is I'll put them anywhere anywhere that I feel like you know you can get a cool shot you know you can at least and I'll point it at me and I can get me drawn back me shooting anything like that I've also used it to get b-roll before on my hunts and what I'll do is usually I'll either put it right here on the right on the side of the tree and i'll face it at my face i'll get it by head height and they're zoomed out pretty good so it'll get you know usually chest maybe full body and you know i know it'll get my face or i'll put it on the right hand side of the tree up here but what i really like is i like putting my my camera arm up high i like putting my secondary angle camera up high now and i like facing it down at me and the reason that i do that is it gets everything especially with the gopro and the wide angle lens it gets everything in behind me it gets and it, sometimes it gets most off to the side of me too and i can have a lot in frame and i'll turn that on and i'll leave that leave that on all through the hunt i'll leave that on and if by chance you don't happen to get the shot on film stuff happens you forget your camera batteries, you forget to charge your camera, your SD card is full and you didn't format it that night, but you don't want to delete film because it's got a bunch of B-roll and some good hunts on it and good encounters. Anything can happen. But with this camera arm up high, this secondary angle camera up high, when I go to shoot, if a deer comes in behind me or to the side, there's a good possibility with that secondary angle camera that I could still get that deer shot on film. But if I don't happen to get that deer shot on film, then it at least gets me shooting the deer and no, and a, a shot, any shot on film is better than no shot. Okay, so let's say that I'm in a tree stand and this looks similar, but a little bit different. So. Whenever you're sitting in a tree stand, you want your camera arm completely opposite of what it was when you're in a saddle. If you're a right-handed shooter, you're gonna want your camera arm on the right-hand side. 
If you're a left-handed shooter, you're going to want it on the left-hand side. And I always put my camera arm whenever I'm hunting in a tree stand between my armpit and the bottom of my hip. And I'll set it up and it puts your camera at a nice about shoulder level is what I like. It's still, whenever you go to draw, it's still out of the way. And you know, if it comes in and your arm's underneath the armpit, you can usually still draw and not contact anything that way. And I try to set up all my shots out of a tree stand in a sitting position. I don't like standing up in a tree stand a lot. But if you do have to stand up in a tree stand, that'll usually put the camera arm around your waist area. I'm using the saddle as a tree stand right now. But it'll put everything at about your waist, which is still good because then it turns into the same position, uh, same height that it was whenever you were in your tree saddle. So let's say, you know, Perfect scenario, same thing. I got a buck coming from my left to my right. It's coming in, we'll do the same thing. And usually if I have my camera arm sitting out like this, I do not have to do anything extravagant or any range of motion that might spook that buck or he might catch me moving the camera or something like that. He comes in, my camera's sitting here, all I'm doing is moving my fluid head, I ain't moving my arm. He comes off right before he gets, I will always try to shoot him off to a kind of 45 degree kind of half turned angle instead of shooting him straight out in front of me I want to shoot him at the side so I'll keep my camera arm right here I'll turn my fluid head on him zoomed out and I will draw back again look at the camera and execute that shot now whenever I go in and say I have a buck coming from right to left if you have to stand up your camera arm, I will move it to the side a little bit, bring it a little bit in like this, and then say I stand up and I'm filming, and then now I'm at the same angle that I normally shoot in the backyard and the same angle that I was shooting at setting down like this. And I can come around, get the deer on film, bam. Smoke steam runs off. I can still stand here, move my arm whichever way the deer went to and get the deer going down on camera. And another thing is, whenever I'm doing B-roll, when you're sitting down, your camera is armpit to, to middle of the ribs, height, weight height. The camera sitting up on the fluid head will be about this high. Now I can get nice good b-roll face shot i can bring the arm out if i need to get more stuff in the background it's not up in my face it's not real close to me everything looks nice on camera and everything's good if i got a deer that's going straight underneath me i'll do the same thing and shooting down out of a tree stand and trying to film with a deer underneath you is a bit is it's a big challenge because now you're having to shoot straight down it's a weird angle already and trying to check your camera while your draw back is a little bit hard out of a tree stand whenever something's going underneath you. So what I'll do is the same rule that we used whenever we're filming out of uh, anything, saddle, whatever. If a buck comes in, doe, whatever you're shooting, pick a spot that you know that thing's going to be at and zoom out. So we'll zoom out. I'll see that it's, say it come up on me pretty quick and I catch it off but I can slowly move and get the camera on it and turn that camera down and I'll see where it's starting to walk out at. It's already say 20 yards from me off to my left hand side or it's 20 yards off to my right hand side and I can see where that animal is coming and walking in underneath me. I will zoom out, turn the fluid head down, press record. I already know which way that animal's going to walk. And once I get everything in on that leaf, pine cone, acorn, twig, whatever trail that I know that deer's gonna be at, animal, I will get that all set up and then I'll just leave it. I'll leave it alone, I'll draw back, and whenever that animal steps on whatever I put that camera on, I'll start executing my shot and I know it's in frame. Then I can grab my camera again, get it on, getting away whatever and dying off on film.
Okay, so say you got a deer and it's coming in behind you. He's coming in, buck of a lifetime. You want to get it on film and he's walking a trail behind you. He's not going to come in front of you. And you're a right-handed shooter. Same thing goes for left-handed shooter. Now it makes it just a little bit more difficult because you got to get the deer coming in behind you. You got to stand up. You got to get everything situated with camera. Now what I do is if the deer's coming in behind me, I'll see that deer, I'll go in, and I will use my release hand. I will not put my bow down and move the camera and then have to pick my bow up. That's too much time, that's too much to happen, and if you do that, then you probably ain't gonna get the deer on film or you probably ain't gonna get the deer at all. And most people wanna get the deer, then they wanna get the deer on film. And I will usually hold my release in my fingers and I can still move that fluid head. If you got a thumb button that clips onto your bow, it makes it easier. Uh, I've hunted with a hinge, so I gotta keep my release in my hand. If you're a wrist strap shooter, it makes it a little bit better too, because you, you don't have to worry about anything clinking, falling out of your hands that way. Um, but I will take that my release hand and I will turn that camera around, and I will turn in one motion with my camera and turn around. And then I will Stay zoomed out. I will get that deer, follow the same trail that that deer that I know he's gonna stop on. I'll get the camera around. If you got a ranging, ranging, put your range finder up, grab that camera, turn it in around on the trail that he's on, and then you have your bow ready already. The bow is already ready, and I will turn that around. If I gotta move my fluid head forward, do whatever, I can do that now, and then after I've ranged the deer, I'll go through, get the camera on him, and then I can draw back and execute the shot, get the deer going down, whatever. But I always use my release hand to move my camera if the deer's coming in behind me on a tree stand, and I will not put my bow hand or my bow up to move that camera. Now, secondary angle cameras out of a tree stand. They do make a rig that you can put it up on say you have a small cage small rig cage whatever on your DSLR and uh, you can put the GoPro on the camera so whenever you get your animal on film it will face you whenever you're shooting the bad thing with that is also is if the deer is underneath you and coming off at a weird angle, you now have to work the camera and move the fluid head. It does work more for spot and stalk than it does out of a tree stand, but you can do it. I don't like doing it personally, but you can. Now what I'll do in a tree stand setup is I will either put it up on my left hand side or I'll put it up on my right hand side and I'll have it facing straight down on me. But still, my favorite angle, it's hard to beat that up overhead angle and I used that in a tree stand this year uh, in September and I had it facing straight down on me and when I faced it straight down I'll put it usually we'll say about arm height so however high however everybody's arms different but I will put it I'll put my head up and then I'll put my arm up wherever I got a comfortable reach to where I can still reach the camera I'll put it about right there and then I'll turn the camera straight down on me. And from that angle, I mean, you can, with a GoPro, you can see everything. I mean, you can see 20, 30 yards out in front of you, 20, 30 yards to your side. And it's just awesome to get that over the head shot. Same thing if your camera dies on you. More times hunting out of a tree stand, your shots are gonna be in this window here you know and probably about 30 yards to the side so everything is going to be in frame if your camera dies whatever and that deer comes in and you shoot that gopro over top of your head out of a tree stand will more than likely 85 percent of the time actually get the animal in shot and then you have the animal getting shot you have you executing your shot and you got everything you can still turn around and do your b-roll stand up in the tree stand and do your b-roll and everything with that secondary angle camera